The electron distribution in an atom is described by a wave function. And the modulus square of this wave function describes the probability of finding the electron anywhere close to the nucleus. This function, this modulus square, is also called the orbital. Now, we've seen that the wave function is described by certain quantum numbers. These quantum numbers are n, l, and ml. There's three of them. They describe the shape of the orbital. Not every set of quantum numbers is valid. Only a valid set of quantum numbers constitutes a valid wave function and thus a valid orbital. Now the orbitals have specific energies. We've seen that the lowest energy orbital is the 1s, followed by the 2s, then the 2p, the 3s, the 3p, then the 4s, the 3d, and so on. Now the electron can only occupy one of these orbitals. And that means that the energetic state of the electron is defined by the energy of the orbital. That also means that the electron cannot just have any arbitrary energy. The energy of the electron, and thus the entire atom, is quantized. In terms of its energy, the atom is a quantized object. Now, uh, we've also seen that only two electrons can occupy a single orbital. And if they do so, one of them must have spin up, or electron spin quantum number one half, and the other one should have electron spin quantum number ms equals minus half, or spin down. Now, let's take this set of rules and apply it to the first few elements of the periodic table. The first element of the periodic table is the hydrogen atom. And we've seen that it contains a nucleus, which is a proton, and a single electron. Now, where does the electron go? In which orbital does the electron go? The so-called Aufbau principle states that the electron goes into the orbital that has the lowest energy. All right, so this electron must go, therefore, in the 1s orbital. The electron configuration of hydrogen is 1s1, one, one electron in the 1s. The second element is helium. Helium has two electrons. So where does the second electron go? Well, the Aufbau principle states that it must go into that orbital that's available and it has the, li the lowest lying energy. That is still the 1s. The second electron can go into the 1s and if it does so, its spin must be opposite from the spin of the electron that's already there. The electron configuration of helium is 1s2. Lithium is the third element, it has three electrons. This third electron must go into a different orbital. Because in the 1s, we have already two electrons. They are paired, they have opposite spins, and the third electron cannot join these two. So the third electron must go into the next available orbital of lowest energy, and that is the 2s. So the electron configuration of lithium is 1s2, 2s1. Next is beryllium. Beryllium has four electrons. Its fourth electron will also be in orbital 2s. Why? Because there's one electron. The second electron can join that electron with opposite spin. So the electron configuration of beryllium is 1s2 and 2s2. The fifth element in the periodic table is boron. Boron has five electrons. Its fifth electron must go into a new orbital. And the orbital with the lowest energy are the 2p orbitals. So the fifth electron of boron sits in either one of these 2p orbitals. Now we also note that the 1s is completely full. The 1s is the only level in the n equals 1 orbitals. We call this level, this shell, a closed shell arrangement. And the electrons that are in the closed shell arrangement we call core electrons. The n equals 2 is not completely filled. The 2s is filled, but the 2p is not. So in n equals 2, we have a so-called open shell arrangement. And the electrons in this shell are called valence electrons. The next element is carbon. Carbon has one extra electron relative to boron. Now, where does this extra electron go? Does it pair up with the electron in the 2p orbital that's already there? Or does it occupy one of the empty 2p orbitals? There's a rule for this, and that is Hund's rule. And Hund's rule states that 
The arrangement with the maximum amount of unpaired spins is the lowest energy arrangement, which means that this extra electron goes into an empty orbital. Either one of the empty orbitals will do. And the same holds for the electrical configuration of nitrogen. Nitrogen has yet one extra electron. It will also occupy the empty available orbital of the 2p subshell. The electrical configuration of nitrogen is 1s2, 2s2 and 2p3. Oxygen is next. Where does oxygen have its electrons? Well, the extra electron of oxygen must now pair up with one of the unpaired spins in the 2p subshell. Either one of them will do. For instance, this one. Uh, the electrical configuration of oxygen, therefore, is 1s2, 2s2, and 2p4. Fluorine is next. It has yet one extra electron. This extra electron will also be forced to pair up with one of the unpaired electrons. The electrical configuration of fluorine is 1s2, 2s2, and five electrons in the 2p subshell. Neon is next. Now, neon has a so-called closed shell arrangement because all the electrons in the n equals 2 shell are now filled. The electrical configuration of neon is 1s2, 2s2, and 2p6. All the p orbitals, all the 2p orbitals are now filled. Which means that the next element must therefore have its last electron in the n equals 3 level. The next element is sodium. The last electron in sodium will occupy a 3s orbital. So the electrical configuration can be written as follows. It has the same electrical configuration as neon, a closed shell arrangement for n equals 1 and the orbitals in n equals 2. The last electron will occupy a level in n equals 3, which is the 3s. Neon 3s is the electrical configuration of sodium. Magnesium has one extra electron, which means that its electrical configuration is neon and then two electrons in the 3s. Now, let's move on to another element in the 3p subshell. For instance, phosphorus. Phosphorus is the third element in the 3p subshell. It has therefore three electrons in the 3p subshell. Its electrical configuration can be quickly written as uh, neon and then three electrons in the 3p. Neon 3p3. And then finally, let's look at the last element in n equals 3. This is argon. Argon, like neon, has a closed shell arrangement. All the orbitals in the n equals 3 level are now occupied. So its electrical configuration can be written as neon 3p6. So we have seen now that the first three rows, n equals 1, n equals 2, and n equals 3 of the periodic table can be fully reconstructed based on the quantum numbers of the orbitals. The combination of the quantum numbers, the valid quantum numbers, and the rule that only two electrons can occupy an orbital will give rise to the structure of the periodic table. This also highlights that the electrical configuration is key towards understanding the structure of the periodic table. The electrical configuration is also key towards understanding the properties, the chemical properties of the elements. This means that elements with similar electrical configurations have similar chemical properties. This is indeed the case. For instance, the column all the way to the left, all these elements in that column have their last electron in a s orbital, one electron in an s orbital, which means they must have similar properties, similar chemical properties, and that's indeed the case. And there's many more of these hidden trends in the periodic table. And as you learn more about chemistry, many of these trends will become clear.